Elijah were back on that book of life. And the Lord said he has a copy. He has his, the original, Lamb's Book of Life. And in his book of life, he wrote the names of all his people, those Christians that are walking with him, that have committed their lives to him, that are still enduring. And the Bible talks about continuing in the faith, grounded and settled. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled. So you want to begin in the spirit, but the most importantly is you want to end in that realm. And in between, you want to be growing and maturing and not hiding your talent. And it talks about the parable of talent. Some people went and hid their talent in the earth. And others, you know, and they used the term talents or like, like, um, oh, what's the word I want to use? Anyways, they brought forth fruit. The talents referring to the fruit of the spirit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And that's what the Lord expected. He expects you to grow and mature in this realm and stay written in the Psalms book of life. You need to have a relationship with the Lord. And in Revelation 3, 5, and actually I'll start in verse 4. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which are not defiled, their garments not to file their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So he that overcometh. And when you read the first few chapters of Revelation, he's speaking to the church. He's telling the church they need to be overcomers, not a bunch of wannabes uh, and underachievers, not those backslidden people you see or hear about all the time and they tell you they're Christian and you look at their life and you go, <laughs> you know, literally you want to say like hell you are, for lack of a better term. You want to continue in this. You want to keep your name written. You want to keep that name intact in his led ledger. Because what happens uh, first, first Timothy 4 1 talks about. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, when you depart from the faith, first of all, you can't depart from something unless you were actually there. You know, we talked in, about uh, yesterday about Second Peter one twenty, where it talked about they they overcame by the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, and then they were in turn overcome again. The Bible talks about the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, the lusts of other things chokes the word, that drowns people in destruction and perdition. That's Mark four twenty, where it talks about the sower, it chokes, it drowns. The love of money drowns men in destruction and perdition. The things of this world overcome them. You know, it talks about the pig was washed and then they turn around and run back to the pig pen. Well, a lot of people do that too. So if you depart from the faith, where do you go? Well, you're not going, you're not going in the Lord's realm and he's not going to support you if you're walking away from him. Remember the prodigal son? He didn't support him in his folly. Um, Hebrews 3. And I'm at verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily what is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if, here's a big word, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. That means you have to stay rooted and grounded in the realm of the Spirit. You have to stay in the Word. Folks, if the Lord said he came in the volume and book and all these words were for our prophet, why wouldn't you be studying this word? I've met Christians and they're Bible illiterate. They call themselves Christians. They don't know what the Bible Why not? My question is, then what were you doing instead of studying the word that you thought was more important? Why wasn't this a priority? You need to know this word. It's for your benefit, for your profit, for doctrine, for reproof, especially doctrine. Because if it's not the doctrine of Christ, it's not considered his. That's going to get your name blotted out if it's not the doctrine of Christ. 2 John 9 says that. That's the only doctrine he acknowledges. 
Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy. I want to talk a little bit more about these blotting out. Deuteronomy 9, and I'll try to stay in the same books just to make it a little easier for your study. Deuteronomy 9, 14. Furthermore, the Lord spoke unto, unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. This was the Lord talking to Moses. And this was, wasn't long after they got into the disobedience. And, you know, and the children of Israel were a good example. Many of them started off with God when they left Egypt. How many of them made it to the promised land? And the Lord said, let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I'll make of thee a greater nation than they. So the, the Lord has been warning his people about blotting out their name. He can do that. He will do that if you walk contrary to what he's asked of you. I know that's not, you know, I know today a lot of people talk about this Joel Olstein down in Houston. And they get it, well, everything he says is just all pie. Yeah, it sounds great. A lot of what he says is interesting because it can be uplifting. You talk about blessing, blessing, blessing. But the Bible talks about all that are in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's also the flip side. And that's where the man of God has to balance, rightly divide. You have to bring both aspects of it. I don't want to sit here and just preach fire and brimstone. But on the other hand, I don't want to be a fool and just talk about, you know, the, all the blessings and that, you know, write me a check and your life would just be hunky-dory after. That's not the way it works either. So it's very specific to talk about the blotting out. Um, you can go, we can continue here in to 29.20 in Deuteronomy. And just to bring, you know, more than, you know, Bible talks about in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So you have a copy of the book of life. This is it. This is the Lamb's book. Of, the Lamb has his original. And I'm at verse 29. And and actually this chapter is, is in my Bible, talks about warning against disobedience. And he's warning a bit of the people about what's going to happen when you get to the problem. At the end of Deuteronomy, Moses dies off, and then it goes into Joshua. And then Joshua is when they go into the promised land with a new leader. And it should, and I'm in verse, I'm at 29, verse 19. You can read all this chapter if you want. And it shall come to pass when he hears the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart saying, I have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord is jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. So there's the warning. That's what I want to bring as well, is the warning, folks. We, you know, remember the old uh, Lost in Space, the robot, warning, warning, warning. Well, here's your warning. It can happen. And if you turn over to chapter 32, I believe that we had one in 32 as well. Uh, I had 29, 20. No, I'm thinking of Exodus. Exodus 32. So let's go back a little ways to Exodus 32. And I mean, I, I've got numerous, numerous. Exodus 32. And again, Moses is sitting on behalf of the people. And in verse 31 of Exodus 32, 31. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Well, today, you know, it's not much different. We, You watch that stuff on TV, and it seems like their gods are gods of gold and silver and uh, credit cards and or write a check, whatever. Yet, now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore, therefore now go lead the people unto the place which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit them, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. That was when they made the golden calf and tried to worship that. And then they wanted to, and then they made the calf, and then they offered burst, burnt offering sacrifice, thinking God was pleased with that. Well, it reminds me a lot of organizations today that try to 
you know, they set up an altar and try to offer something unto the Lord. That has nothing to do with spirit and truth. Remember, the Bible says they that worship must worship, must worship in spirit and in truth. And if any of them two are not in play, either are you. And eventually you walk off. You'll be deceived. You walk off the path of life. There's one Lord, one faith. There's one path of life that's going to get you home. Nothing else is going to work. Nothing else is going to get you there. Um, and we could go to Ezekiel 18. When that goes on farther, as you get into the uh, Old Testament. I was hoping I had this one. Yeah, here it is. Ezekiel 18. And I'm at verse 24. But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? Question mark. You know, you could put in there once saved, always saved? Question mark. Well, a lot of people question it, but it's not a question mark. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass, that he has trespassed. And in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. If he allows sin to enter back in and allows it to overtake him and overcome him, then he's no longer a part of the kingdom of God. Yet they say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal and your ways unequal? So there again, here's people that were with the Lord, but they allowed something in and over them. And I want to, and to overcome them, I want to make it clear that too, you can't ask for forgiveness. Don't think that there's a sin. You'll know, your heart, you know, the heart will convict you. There won't be peace. That heart, you know, will convict you. And it will let you know. If you're in tune with the Lord, you'll know. Unless you become hard-hearted and enter unbelief. And if the Lord's asked you to do something and you don't want to do it, or you know, you can become hard-hearted and walk away. You can depart from the faith anytime. You can't depart from something unless you were actually there, people. That's the reality of salvation. Psalm 69, 28 And I mean, and it just goes on, it goes on and on. I believe I had 69.28 in here. I didn't have it marked. For they persecute him, I'm in verse 26, whom they have smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. And iniquity, add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them come unto righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of living, and be not written with the righteous. So it, it, the Bible is consistent on this fact that you can be blotted out of the book of the living. Um, and I can give you a few more verses. Luke ten twenty talks about names written in the book of life. Uh, and I had another one here, Proverbs ten, I believe I, I had as well. Had a verse because I want to close. Psalm 109 13 also talks about name block, your names being blotted out. So we're going to close here. I want to go to the end of Revelation 21. All right, actually, I want to go to 22. And I'm in verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth come, and let him that hath thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. We saw that earlier back in the Old Testament, in, in, in one of the scriptures we read earlier. Verse 19. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. You can't take something out unless it was there. You can't depart from the faith unless you were there. Out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. This book, we talked about Psalm 40, verse 7, Hebrews 10, 7, which talks about, behold, I come in the volume of a book. Anything outside this book is books. And we read earlier in Revelation 21 that the things that are in the books are man's works. The things that are contained in here have to do with the Word of God and His book, His ledger. 
That's where you want to be. You want to be in this book because this is the only one that matters. This is the only one that's going to get you home. And, and again, we can go back and I will finish with this verse just because in chapter 20, verse 11, where he talks about the great right throne. And those that weren't in the book, there was no place found for them. In verse 12, I saw the dead, great, small, and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things were ritual, which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. That's religion. That's not spirit and truth. That's not salvation. That's religion. A cheap knockoff. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And the Bible talks about, uh, in the end of uh, 1 Corinthians 15, where it talks about when death is swallowed up in victory. Then shall be brought to pass. When this more, excuse me, it talks about when this mortality will put on immortality. Then death is swallowed up in victory, the second death. Then we will receive a glorified body and we'll be home forever. And verse 15, and I'm going to close on this. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, folks, if I were you, my goal today would be to find out what's in the Lamb's book of life. Remember, the Lord himself said, my words are spirit and life. I came in John 10, 10, that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Right before that, it says the thief comes out, to, but to steal, kill, and destroy. Here's the Lamb's book of life. Find out what's in it so that you, you can do the things that please God. He that does the will of God will abide forever. Know what's in that book. Most importantly, know that your name is in there because it can be blotted out if you're not watching and paying attention. So God bless. Stay awake.